The first game in the Grand Theft Auto series was released all the way back in 1997, and since then, the franchise has grown massively, with each new release outshining the one before. GTA V, released in 2013, shattered industry sales records and achieved the title of the fastest-selling entertainment product in history. Having shipped over 180 million copies in total, it currently sits second on the list of best-selling video games ever, after Minecraft, obviously. With another GTA title currently in the works, what better time to remind ourselves of why GTA V is just so great? Here's a full recap of GTA V's story from beginning to end. Our saga begins in 2004 with a group of bank robbers, namely Michael Townley, Brad, Trevor, and an anonymous getaway driver, along with their remote contact Lester. Together, they undertake a heist on a security company in Ludendorff, North Yankton. However, their plan takes a disastrous turn when Trevor kills a security guard, prompting a relentless police chase. When the getaway driver is killed during the pursuit and the car crashes onto a farm, the remaining crew members are forced to flee on foot. An intense shootout with the police soon follows, during which a sniper injures Brad and appears to kill Michael. Trevor manages to escape, believing Michael to be dead. After some time passes, a funeral takes place at a graveyard to honor Michael, but we see him watching the proceedings from a distance. What? So, unbeknownst to the attendees, the sniper also lurks among the mourners, concealing their true intentions. In present-day Los Santos, Michael frequently visits a psychiatrist's office to address the issues plaguing his family life. It's revealed that Michael had secretly struck a bargain with the FIB, agreeing to betray his crew in return for a chance at a new life in the Witness Protection Program. The press was fed a carefully crafted narrative, stating that Brad had been sentenced to life imprisonment while Michael was reported to have passed away. Leaving the psychiatrist's office, Michael briefly chats with two young gangbangers named Franklin and Lamar, who are on the lookout for a place to live. These two work as vehicle repossessors for a car dealer named Simeon Yetarian, a man notorious for employing unethical tactics that make it difficult for customers to keep up with their payments. Despite their connection to Simeon, Franklin and Lamar aspire to escape the hardships of the ghetto and abandon their life in the street gang. Driven by these dreams, they decide to steal from their boss. Later, in the course of a typical repossession job, Franklin discovers Michael hidden in the backseat of the car he's taken. Fascinated by Franklin's obedient attitude, Michael takes a liking to him and proposes meeting up for a drink in the future, but not before he's dealt with Simeon and destroyed his business. Though Michael's outburst ultimately costs Franklin his job, Franklin agrees to meet up for a drink, seeking any excuse to get out of his overbearing aunt's house. After striking up a friendship, Michael receives a frantic call from his son Jimmy, who attempted to sell Michael's boat in secret, only to find himself in a dangerous situation. Franklin helps to rescue Jimmy, impressing Michael with his driving skills and bravery in the process. From that point forward, Michael decides to keep Franklin informed whenever he has work or tasks that require Franklin's expertise and assistance. Their shared adventure has solidified their bond and trust in one another. One fateful day, Michael catches his wife's tennis coach in a compromising situation, prompting him to chase the coach to a lavish residence in Vinewood Hills. Together with Franklin's assistants, they wreak havoc on half of the house before returning home, only to discover that the coach had sought refuge in the home of another client, whose husband is a formidable gang leader named Martin Madrazo. Enraged by the destruction caused, Madrazo confronts Michael, demanding restitution for the damages. Faced with this predicament, Michael turns to an old friend named Lester, who skillfully arranges a daring heist at a jewelry store. With Michael, Franklin, and a select group of accomplices, this heist is executed flawlessly, and they manage to escape with the valuable jewels. Then they lay low for a while to evade any potential repercussions. However, the daring jewelry heist has caught the attention of a familiar face. Trevor! 
Immediately, he pieces together that Michael is still alive. For years, Trevor has been under the impression that he's been exchanging letters with his imprisoned partner Brad. However, unbeknownst to Trevor, his correspondence has actually been with FIB agent Dave Norton, who uses this guise to keep tabs on Trevor and maintain Michael's cover story. Meanwhile, Trevor has been making a living by pitting various gangs in his area against each other and facilitating illicit transactions, including meth production and sales. After eliminating Johnny Klebitz, the leader of a local motorcycle gang, Trevor sets out to dismantle his competition. He decisively decimates Klebitz's gang and confronts the Chinese Wei Cheng triad members encroaching on his territory. With his local affairs settled, Trevor, accompanied by his friend Wade, heads to Los Santos in search of Michael, eager to uncover the truth behind his long absence. Upon arriving at Michael's house, a heated altercation unfolds between Michael and his wife, who discovers his return to a life of crime. Neither Michael nor his wife welcome Trevor's presence, as they realize that it only spells greater danger for them. However, their uneasy reunion is interrupted when they learn that Michael's daughter, Tracy, is about to embarrass herself on television by auditioning for the show Fame or Shame, hosted by the dubious Laszlo Jones. In a rush, the two men race to the TV studio and interrupt the audition, leading to a wild chase where they confront and humiliate Laszlo Jones. During this intense moment, Michael and Trevor briefly reminisce about their past together and tentatively agree to keep in touch. Trevor and Wade then take up residence in an apartment owned by Wade's cousin Floyd as Trevor contemplates expanding his business endeavors to Los Santos. In addition to his family, the FIB is also not pleased with Michael's return to a life of crime, even when he explains that it was solely to repay Madrazo. In retaliation for putting him in a compromising situation, Dave Norton informs Michael that he must carry out a few covert operations for the FIB to ensure that his secrets remain protected. Following an incident where Michael is rendered unconscious, he is assigned a task where he must pose as a lifeless body and steal vital information on a suspected terrorist from a rival intelligence organization, the IAA. Armed with the acquired information and after unfortunate incidents that led to the deaths of several IAA agents, Michael and his crew successfully abduct the suspected terrorist, Ferdinand Karamov. While Michael and Norton deal with another assassination, Trevor is given a mission by a corrupt FIB agent named Steve Haynes to torture Karamov for crucial intel. However, it turns out that Karamov is innocent, prompting Trevor to defy orders and release him at an airport. For the time being, the FIB has obtained what they wanted, and Michael's secrets remain secure once again. As for Franklin, he's ventured into more upscale criminal activities, accepting additional assignments from Lester that involve taking out high-profile targets. The acquired funds elevate Franklin's lifestyle, leading him to live in a luxurious Vinewood Hills mansion purchased with Lester's help. However, despite his newfound success, Franklin remains entangled in the street gang hustle, particularly with Lamar's involvement. Meanwhile, Trevor seeks to expand his business operations and decides to steal an experimental weapon from the government security contractor Merriweather. Initially, all seems to be going smoothly, until Lester intervenes, pressuring Trevor to return the stolen weapon before they all become prime targets on the government's kill list. As time passes, the lives of the protagonists descend into chaos. Michael's criminal activities finally lead to his family leaving him. Later, he ventures into the movie industry as a producer, but finds himself at odds with Devin Weston, a billionaire venture capitalist and ruthless corporate raider. Devin tries to shut down Michael's studio, and during their conflict, Michael unintentionally kills Devin's assistant, triggering Devin's thirst for vengeance. Meanwhile, Franklin is faced with the task of rescuing his friend Lamar Davis from Harold Stretch Joseph, a former friend and rival gangster. Stretch aims to prove his loyalty to his new gang by attempting to kill Franklin and Lamar. 
Simultaneously, Trevor endeavors to establish his dominance over various black markets in Blaine County. He engages in intense conflicts with the Lost Outlaw Motorcycle Club, Latin American street gangs, rival meth dealers, the private military company Merriweather, and the formidable triad kingpin Wei Chang. The three protagonists find themselves entangled in perilous situations as their paths intersect and collide with dangerous adversaries. On another front, Madrazo reaches out to Michael for aid in dealing with a relative who plans to testify against him, armed with incriminating files. Both Michael and Trevor succeed in neutralizing the threat, but during the handover of evidence to Madrazo, Trevor seizes the opportunity to abduct Madrazo's wife and forms an unexpected relationship with her. Fearing Madrazo's retaliation, Michael and Trevor escape to Blaine County to conceal themselves from him. While seeking refuge in the desert, the FIB approaches Michael and Trevor once more, seeking additional funds for a critical raid on an IAA laboratory. In response, Michael and Trevor reach out to Lester, who arranges a bank robbery in the countryside to secure the required funds. Franklin joins the team and they embark on the heist, soon realizing that it's far more challenging than they had anticipated. As they continue their activities, Michael and Trevor stumble upon a valuable item during their thefts from Merriweather, which could potentially resolve their issues with Madrazo. However, obtaining this resolution depends on Trevor severing his relationship with Madrazo's wife and willingly returning her to him. Additionally, Michael pledges to Trevor that they will conduct a massive heist on the Union Depository in Los Santos. United in their efforts, Michael, Trevor, and Franklin assist the FIB in successfully raiding the laboratory. Following the operation, Trevor fulfills his end of the bargain and returns Madrazo's wife. Michael and Trevor safely make their way back to Los Santos, ready to face the next chapter in their lives. Upon returning to his desolate home, Michael finds that Trevor has set up his new base of operations in a strip club in Los Santos. Meanwhile, Lester and the protagonists begin planning their ambitious heist on the Union Depository. However, before they can proceed, Trevor uncovers a disturbing truth that he feels compelled to confirm. Driven by his suspicions, Trevor travels back to North Yankton and exhumes what he believes to be Michael's grave, only to discover Brad's body underneath. Michael attempts to explain without explicitly admitting the deal he made prior to the bank robbery nine years ago. During this tense confrontation in the graveyard, Chinese gangsters suddenly appear and capture Michael while Trevor manages to escape. The gangsters mistakenly believe Michael to be Trevor's lover, but Trevor would rather they kill him. While Michael is held hostage, Trevor, Franklin, and Lamar fulfill their obligations in delivering Devin Weston's rare cars. However, instead of immediate payment, Weston informs them that the money will be invested for them, to be distributed gradually over time. Now, this decision doesn't sit well with Franklin, who approaches Lester to help locate Michael, knowing that he has a better understanding of Weston. With Lester's assistance, Franklin traces Michael's phone signal to a warehouse in Los Santos. Franklin bravely eliminates the Chinese gangsters to free Michael from captivity. The journey to reunite the trio is fraught with challenges and danger, but their determination remains unwavering. Free once more, Michael is presented with one final mission by Dave Norton. If he successfully breaks into the FIB headquarters and acquires certain files that will conceal the shady dealings involving Steve Haynes and Norton, Michael's criminal record will be wiped clean and he will be granted full freedom. Michael meticulously plans the daring heist, but amidst all this, he discovers that Devin Weston intends to withhold the film that he and Solomon produced, instead aiming to cash in on an insurance payout by deeming the production a failure. In response to Weston's treachery, Michael decides to take matters into his own hands and steals the film. During the chase, Weston's lawyer meets his accidental demise, Michael and Franklin team up to execute the raid on FIB headquarters, and Dave Norton honors his commitment to hold up his end of the deal.
However, their triumph is short-lived as they're suddenly faced with numerous factions seeking revenge, including Meriwether, the IAA, and Steve Haynes himself. In the midst of this dangerous situation, Trevor unexpectedly arrives and joins the fray, assisting Michael and his allies. Though Trevor remains wounded by Michael's past betrayal, they form an uneasy truce and agree to unite for the Union Depository heist, setting aside their grievances for the sake of their common goal. As developments unfold, Franklin receives distressing news that Lamar has been captured by a rival street gang in the countryside. Both Michael and Trevor join forces with Franklin to free Lamar and bring him back safely to Los Santos. Upon leaving Lamar's house, FIB agents confront Franklin, instructing him to eliminate Trevor, but without specifying when. Meanwhile, Michael attends the premiere of his movie, only to face a ruthless attack from Weston's mercenaries who raid his house and take his family hostage. In a fierce counterattack, Michael reclaims his home and decides to move his family to a safer location temporarily. With their loved ones out of harm's way, the main trio proceed with their grand heist at the Union Depository. Despite fierce resistance from the LSPD and Meriwether, their heist proves successful. Everything appears to be going well until Weston unexpectedly appears at Franklin's house. Weston demands that Franklin choose between killing Michael or Trevor, but Franklin reveals that the FIB has also ordered him to eliminate Trevor. Franklin finds himself at a crossroads, faced with a very difficult choice. Carry out the assassination of either Michael or Trevor, or risk his own life to try to save them all. The weight of this decision weighs heavily on Franklin as he contemplates the fate of his friends and the potential consequences for his own future. If Franklin opts to kill Trevor, a tense chase ensues, culminating in Trevor crashing his car into a gas tanker, causing fuel to leak. As Franklin fires his gun, the fuel ignites and Trevor is burned alive. Michael, grappling with the death of his former friend, suggests that he and Franklin part ways as he comes to terms with Trevor's death. Alternatively, if Franklin chooses to heed Weston's orders and eliminate Michael, he tries to seek help from Trevor. However, Trevor remains unforgiving, still considering Michael a traitor for their past actions nine years ago. In a harrowing pursuit, Franklin chases Michael from his home to a bridge where Michael tragically falls to his death. After Michael's demise, his family confronts Franklin, telling him that they know about his involvement in Michael's death and to stay away. In either scenario, Franklin faces the devastating consequences of his choices, with friendships shattered and lives irrevocably changed by the paths that he has chosen. The weight of his decisions leaves a profound impact on his conscience and the relationships that he once held dear. However, don't worry guys, there is a happier ending. If Franklin chooses not to betray his companions, he actually seeks assistance from Lester to find an alternative solution to save all of them. United once more, Franklin, Trevor, and Michael devise a comprehensive plan to eliminate their enemies. Michael takes down the Bala's leader, Trevor deals with Steve Haynes, and Franklin orchestrates the downfall of the Triad leader. Having successfully eliminated all of their targets, Trevor confronts Meriwether's mercenaries one final time to capture the last individual on their hit list, Devin Weston. They stuff poor Weston into one of his cherished sports cars and then send it hurtling off a cliff, resulting in Weston's demise as well as the destruction of his beloved car. With their adversaries dealt with and the gratitude of Dave Norton leading to their records being cleared, the trio agrees to maintain a low profile for the time being, just cherishing their friendship. Now guys, in the world of Grand Theft Auto, this right here might just be the closest thing to a happy ending that anyone could hope for, despite all the bloodshed that paved the way, of course.